Pour yourself another glass of liquor, we got a new episode of Silo, and with it a bunch of new theories, clues, and mysteries. As always, I've left links to all the topics I'll be covering in the description below, and don't worry, there won't be any spoilers. I haven't read the book, so everything here is done through sleuthing. Now prepare to go outside, let's get into it. Hot off the heels of Juliet discovering George's citizen record in the event of former Sheriff Holston's apartment, Juliet hopes that these files may provide some clues as to who murdered George. But as Juliet will later tell Martha, there wasn't any information in these files that she didn't already know. So why then would Holston go through all the trouble of hiding these files if there wasn't anything of value in them? Well, there are still some interesting bits of information here. It was Deputy Marnes who conducted the interview into George's possession of relics, specifically the watch, which George said was legal. But if you look closely, there is another familiar name on these files of a character we saw in episode one, Gloria Hildebrand. She was also interviewed, and we know that her character believed there was more to the silo than meets the eye, even insinuating that the reason Allison wasn't able to get pregnant was that the people in charge didn't want her to. In episode one, Allison visits Gloria for a second time, hoping to learn more about the truth, but we never see their full conversation, so it's a safe bet that there's much more to Gloria and her relationship with Allison that may prove useful to Juliet. This episode gives us greater insight into Marnes's murder, introducing us to a character named Douglas Trumbull. Trumbull is a member of the judicial with aspirations of shadowing Sims, and under orders from him, undertakes the assassination of Marnes after Marnes refused to replace Juliet with newcomer Paul Billings. What I'm curious about is who Sims is taking orders from. Is it Judge Meadows, who I believe is this woman, although she's never mentioned by name, or is it someone or something far more secretive? Later in the episode, we see Trumbull visit Sims outside the janitorial closet. Sims's father was a janitor, yet had the power to transfer his bully's entire family. It's implied that the janitor job was merely a front for a far more important one. If Sims wanted to know what his father did, he would need to shadow him and agree to never tell anyone what was on the other side of that door. Whatever is behind that door would change Sims's life forever. His job and those who work behind that door, quote, do the most important work of the silo, work that keeps 10,000 people alive. What I'm curious about is whether this is something Judge Meadows knows about or if Sims is working for someone else entirely. Also, is this just me or are these film canisters in the background? I mean, they could just be pots and pans, but it's a little too hard to see. Sims and Trumbull had planned to frame a man by the name of Patrick Kennedy for the murder of Marnes by placing rat poison and Marnes' drawing of Mayor Ruth in his apartment. But little did they know that due to a clerical error, Patrick had moved out of that apartment shortly after his wife's death. This was how Juliet was able to catch Trumbull returning to the scene of the crime. Sims, knowing he has to cover his tracks, kills Trumbull, and Trumbull's death is deemed a suicide, since Trumbull was now wanted for almost killing Juliet. But when Juliet tells Judge Meadows she can look into why this guy would want Marnes dead, Meadows says not to waste any more resources on it. Almost as if she knows the truth. So the question then becomes, did Judge Meadows task Sims with killing Marnes, who in turn ordered Trumbull to do it? Unfortunately, this grand plan to make Juliet look like a fool backfires, and she ends up solving the case and getting on interim Mayor Bernard's good side. It's a pretty strange change in demeanor which Juliet picks up on. Why would a guy who hated her for stealing tape a few episodes ago now be so enthusiastic to work with her? And just a reminder, if you like these types of videos and want more, please be sure to like and subscribe, it really helps the channel out. What I find rather troubling was Bernard's craftiness. Not only does he want to craft a story about Ruth and Marnes being in love, remember he doesn't know that they actually were, but he wants to distract the citizens with a race to the top foot race and a forgiveness holiday. And do we really believe him that he doesn't want this job and will be glad it's over in a few months? He sure seems to like the perks of indulging in Ruth's liquor. We also get a little more insight into why Sandy has been so cold towards Juliet. Not only does she think Juliet only took this job to find out who killed her lover, but she also thinks Juliet may have something to do with Holston's death. Marnes told her that something happened between the two and that's why Holston went out to clean. So Sandy's pissed a woman with no knowledge on the pact is now in charge and may have been responsible for the death of her beloved co-worker. I'm curious if she'll be back since at the end of the episode she requests a reassignment. We also get our first look inside the offices of Judicial. Both of 
Judge Meadows and Sims. There isn't anything too crazy that I wanted to point out besides this vault-like door behind Sims' desk. It just makes me wonder what kind of sensitive information is in there and if it has any connection to the stuff beyond the janitor's closet. Paul Billings mentions a group called the Friends of the Silo, a group Juliet calls Listeners. From what I can tell, these are individuals who are kind of like de facto spies working for Judicial. They provide reports to them, but none of what they say is admissible in court. The Friends of the Silo think that our poisoner is a gambler by the name of Ralph Melby, but we know it's not him, so the Friends of the Silo are not to be trusted. That is, if they even exist at all. Since this info came from Sims and Judicial, who is trying to make Juliet look incompetent, it can't be trusted. Now, this isn't the first time characters have expressed concerns over being watched. In this episode, Sandy tells Juliet that she feels she's being watched, but isn't sure by who or how. And in episode one, Gloria turns on the faucet in her apartment so that those listening in won't be able to hear her conversation. This implies that these spies may have listening devices all around the silo. One of the more interesting new developments is Lucas and his tracking of the stars. Oddly enough, neither Lucas, Juliet, or Martha refer to them as stars, rather lights, implying that they never learned basic astronomy in school, which I found rather odd. Why wouldn't the powers that be not want them to know about stars? Lucas has been tracking a particular constellation that looks like a W. This is Cassiopeia, a constellation only visible in the Northern Hemisphere. So if what we're seeing here is real, remember that it could be a recorded screen, it would imply the silo is located north of the equator. Now, if there are any avid astronomers out there and you can pick up more details on this screen, I'd love for your input in the comments below. Heading back to the down deep, Juliet catches up with Martha, who's uncovered this microchip inside the camcorder. This segues into her two big mysteries about the pack. Number one, it stipulates no mechanization of how people go up and down the silo. That's why you don't see any pulley systems or elevators. Would this mechanization interfere with something? It's just a huge red flag. The second mystery ties into the camcorder. No magnification is allowed beyond a certain power, and Martha theorizes with wiring this camcorder has being so small, its power will be quite strong. With the previous scene being about the stars, could this device be used to get a better look at them, or perhaps figure out something about the screen? We also get a small bit of information about Juliet's mother creating a more powerful magnifying glass that Judicial destroyed. Last episode, we saw how her mother led the recovery of Jacob, leading me to believe she's some sort of doctor or scientist. Last episode, we also saw Martha had the camcorder hooked up to a computer, and I'm still curious if she found anything else on there, similar to how Allison and George hooked up the hard drive to a computer to uncover a ton of secret files. The episode ends with Juliet retrieving the duck Pez dispenser left to her by George in episode 2. In order for Juliet to continue looking into George's murder, she'll need to open an investigation that allows her to look into it without raising suspicion. And the way she's going to do that is with the right bait, with the implication being that this Pez dispenser is the bait. I'm really curious what she intends to do with it, with my only real theory that since it's a relic, she may plant it on someone to open a new investigation. Now we get into that part of the video where we look at the trailers to see if we can glean any new information. Keep in mind that I'll only be going over the images that deal with a new clue or mystery that appeared in this episode. Check out this glasses and magnifying glass contraption. I'm curious if this is a flashback of Juliet's mother building that powerful magnifying glass, the one destroyed by Judicial, or perhaps this is Martha recreating it. But I doubt it based on the hair. It looks like Gloria is back and in some sort of hospital. A few shots later, we see some soldiers approaching a long-term care facility. Could they be after Gloria? After all, she was what she called a wanderer, someone who questioned what was really going on in the silo. We also got this shot of Juliet hiding behind a desk in a hospital-like setting. But we can't be certain whether or not this is the long-term care center. With Juliet's father also being a doctor, I wonder if he'll come into play. Here's that shot of Juliet connecting the hard drive to a computer. Now, I've been looking at all the desks of everyone in the show and haven't quite found a match on whose computer this is. But if you think you have an idea, let me know in the comments below. Speaking of comments, let me know what you thought about this week's episode and your theories on what will happen next. Thanks for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And for more bad takes, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember... No! Ah!